Hey guys, this is Russ and Gabby, and this is She Wolf Alchemy. And today we're doing another Questions Nobody Asks Us, where we scour the net and we look at questions on different advice forums and we go ahead and answer those questions, even though they did not ask us to answer those questions. <laughs> so I have the first question today, and so I'm going to read it to you guys. And it starts off with, hey, everybody, I'm here with an open mind because I'm really at a loss at the moment. I'm studying a long bachelor degree that's pretty rigorous and being successful requires me to get as much hands-on experience as I can. My boyfriend and I have been dating long distance from the start of the relationship for 15 months now, and I've been in my degree for almost five years. We have been going through a lot of relationship problems, majority of it being my own doing. And as a result, a large part of the fixing is my responsibility. The dilemma I'm having is I have been getting a lot of opportunities to travel and work for practical experience across the world. My boyfriend says me going on these trips is placing my degree over him when they are meant to be equal at worst. He says it is logical that I should cancel my trips and spend the time with him and that me wanting to go in the first place shows him I don't care about the relationship because I have been the one to repeatedly screw up so I should be committed to fixing everything. I come from a family that highly values education, career development has always been priority number one. So am I neglecting my boyfriend? Should I be canceling any potential trips to spend the time with him instead? Question mark. Baby, 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 baby. Uh, so some of this just feels like manipulation one-on-one. Um, I am a big believer, especially as a woman, do not let no man convince you out of taking opportunities that will pay off for you in the long run, that will help build your independence, that will help build up your finances, and that will help set you on a mark to be someone who I am there because I want to, not because I need to. I am a big advocate of making sure women know that when you put a man over your career, over possibilities of great opportunities for yourself and things that help you invest in yourself, that you are putting yourself in a very, very dangerous position. My belief is that, or the type of love that I believe in is the type of love where my person wants me to better myself type of love that I believe that I personally want the women in my life at mm. least to have is the type of love where I am not asking you to risk your future for my emotional needs. I personally feel like um, this is your partner being selfish. I wish we had more details about what you were saying in regards to it's my responsibility. I need to fix it. Just because I've hear a lot of women say that. And then when you hear the story, it really wasn't their fault. It really wasn't their responsibility. So I wish we had more background on that because I'm kind of side eyeing that. Not to say women can't be responsible for it. If y'all listen to any of the episodes where I talk about my past relationships you will know i am the problem most of the time like and that's not a fantasy i was out here doing i was out here acting like my damn brothers okay like i i, I was problematic uh it's still slightly problematic i'm working on it so that's not to say women can't be the problem however i have noticed um especially in my work a lot of times when i hear women being like yeah because i have to make it up to them i have to make it up and then you break down a story and you realize like they've been convinced that they were the problem and so that they were actually were. Since I don't have any background on why you think you were the one that needs to fix the relationship, I won't touch on it. Maybe you are. Maybe we're, maybe, you know, you maybe you my twin. You out here just, just ruining men. Just sending them to therapist's office on the daily. Maybe so, sis. However, I still don't think that's worth you throwing away opportunities that will allow you to travel the world, that will help you build your name, get the connections that you want where you can write your own ticket. It really feels like, um, this is him manipulating your emotions so he can get what he wants. And unfortunately, it's at the cost of amazing opportunities that it sounds like you might not be able to get again. And I don't think that's worth it. Gabby? Agree. So at the bottom of this thing, to clarify, it's, it's many weeks. It's been about four weeks spread over 1.5 years. And I do get other weekends off that I come home and spend time with him, as well as being able to drive home four hours to spend weekends with him roughly once a month. Okay, drops phone. Let me tell you something. I went and got my master's and dated somebody and did long distance. I did one relationship that was long distance and I was with that person for two and a half years. I would literally fly from DC, go to Kentucky, drive three hours to go to Pikeville, Kentucky to oh, stay with I this man. I know where this story is going. Um, sacrificed a lot of my freedom 
yeah going out with friends hanging out opportunities for this man um for him to cheat and get somebody else pregnant i'm just gonna throw it out there feelings crushed why because this is one relationship who i could say i did everything that i was supposed to do i was doing home he graduated because of me um so don't ever sacrifice yourself or sacrifice opportunities for nobody why because i do believe in that pivotal moment when you are in school you do outgrow people and you do outgrow relationships i'm not saying this is a relationship you have outgrown you know you still may be there but he's not there this is somebody who needs to grow with you and needs to accept the things that you're doing because you're off to greatness and it's right there in front of you so don't let that extra baggage hold you back yep yeah yeah and it's so crazy because me and you were just talking about that relationship before we got on the uh, and recorded like we literally were just talking about that relationship and like how that like really affected you how that like that really that heartbreak Girl. really changed the course of your life and like you I said mean, so, yeah, I don't talk, mm -mm, mm -mm. and you oh. really did do like everything that you could to try to make that relationship work and also you were the yeah. one that put in the effort because baby girl what I'm saying here is like I don't see nothing about him driving to see you I don't see nothing that about part. him flying out to see you or anything and it, it, it just again she's again she's put in that again this is four weeks but it's spread out of the course of a year and a half okay he can give up four weeks out of 78 weeks, a year and a half. That's about 78 weeks. He couldn't give up four weeks out of 78. Y'all already long distance. And you already plan on coming home once a month, trying to see him again. You didn't mention if he's doing that. No, baby girl, I really hope that you, uh, and actually this one was posted three hours ago. So maybe I'll just copy a link to the podcast and put it in there. <laughs> But like, I really hope you do not give up these great opportunities for at least what we're seeing is someone who is not putting in the same effort. But even if they are, then if I love you, I should want greatness for you. I should want good things for you. And again, I should not ask you to throw away really rare opportunities to appease my emotions. That part, boom, you said it. Like I 110% agree. I have nothing... Nothing to say about that. I agree. All right, Gab, you got the next one. All right. So it says, just finished up a date. And at the end, I said, drive home safe. And she said, let her know when I get home. I want to say, let me know if you get home safe too. But for some reason, it just didn't come out my mouth. Anyway, I said, hey, just got home. I had a nice time. You were cute and sweet. Did you get home all right? And she said, I did. Thank you for checking. Thank you so much for dinner. So she didn't say she had a nice time, didn't reciprocate my compliments. I can find out if she if she's someone that even likes compliments. Basically, I want to know if she think I want to know if she think she likes me based off interaction. Personally, it didn't really seem like she did. We also didn't have a crazy spark. Anyway, I'm too tired to keep writing more, so I'm just gonna go to bed. I'll check back in the morning. Um, so for me. And this is just my person, me as a person, just be upfront, just ask. Nothing's wrong with asking a question. Did you enjoy the date? Um, nothing's even wrong with um, asking if you like compliments because some women do not like compliments. I'm a woman who does not like, not like compliments. I don't really take them well. I'm working on that part of my life. Mm -hmm. Even when somebody says I'm pretty, I'm like, eh. like it, I get the ick, but I'm working on that. So um, if you are interested in her, there's no harm in taking initiative being upfront, like hey you know so that way you can get a vibe and you can know how to move be assertive take that step because at the end of the day what do you have to lose if she says no and stops talking to you then guess what you still didn't lose you won why because you know how she feels at the end of the day you do not lose you don't lose on, any, on anything because if she wants to talk to you guess what she talk, she'll talk to you if she doesn't want to talk to you you'll know it's a win-win to me yeah i agree with what gabby said i also want to add in there it's really simple to just ask folks instead of driving yourself crazy on okay well, did they like me and trying to analyze every little thing um i know myself there was a person i was dating and they had said to me that they did not know if i liked them or not because they were <laughs> like they were used to and they were a pretty boy it's just this is the thing about dating them pretty boys lord oh 
But essentially what it came down to was like, he was used to women just being like, I like you so much. And I really want to be with you. And I really, really like this. And like, we would hang out, we would have fun and we would interact. And then like, I would go about my day. And then like, when we talk, we talked and it was a great conversation or whatever. But to me, it had been like a month. And so like, I don't know if I liked you or not. We were still communicating. We were still getting to know one another. And I thought, mm-hmm. because when you asked me to hang out, I would say yes. And I would come hang out with you and I would interact and I was socializing that dialog. That was enough. And for him, it was just like, well, I'm used to people being more complimentary. I'm used to women being very much, you know, telling me how they feel. And I was just like, oh. That's all we all, at that point in time in my life I wasn't even good at that like that, that was just not a thing <laughs> I have had men telling me I'm they feel they don't know if I like them and I have found that so funny because here I am thinking I'm like giving off I like you energy and it's definitely not that like I have had like men be like you know the reason we never date is because I never could tell if you like you like me or not. So then I think back, like, does that mean I'm emotionally unavailable? Like, I think back, but we, I know we, that's a... We do not have the time to go into that, Gabby. We do not have the time. This is not... I could be... You triggered something when you said that, and I'm like... Huh. like but what? if... But I, I say all that to say I'll slim it down. If they just simply ask me, yeah, then they would know. that th- That's it. That's it. Just ask me, and... I would give you an answer. I mean, my whole thing is, especially when you're in those type of interactions where I'm um, like, one of the things he said, it wasn't like it was a lot of spark. They didn't have like a crazy spark, but he said like, it seemed like she liked you based off the interactions. Right. Then I mm-hmm. would just like hit her up again. Like, Hey, I did have fun. I want to see if you want to do this again. Uh, That's going to give you more info than us or people on the internet. I agree. Um, and that's why I brought the whole thing up with the guy. He brought it up like, I, do you like me? Because blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh, and I was like, I'm still trying to figure out if I like you. And like, that's when we left it. Like, I, I'm still trying. He did not like that answer. I think that was like the last time I talked to that man. He did not like that response. <laughs> but oh I'm still God. trying to figure out. And this is when I was young. I was like 22 at the time. But, you know, ask the folks or, you know, again, see if they want to interact. And I, and I get why it can be hard asking a person that. Uh, matter of fact, this is also something me and Gabby talked about before we started recording, but like, you can also pay attention to certain signals. Like if I hit you up and you don't call answer, okay. Mm-hmm. And you never call back. Or if I text you and I don't even think you get, it can only be one. So then maybe I text you a couple of days later and you're not responding then like, okay, then yes, then let's not badger them. <laughs> so I then do the, Hey, do you like me? Do you want to be with me type of thing? Cause I am a big person that believes in like, people will show you. Um, I and agree. if you are in situations where you feel unsure about if that person likes you reevaluate, you know, if that's something that you want to be in. However, it sounds like this was like a first date in it makes sense. Go back to like what normal interactions are. I think sometimes because of like media and so forth, we believe every time we meet people, it's supposed to be this instant spark and supposed to be magical. It is normal for a person after one date to just be like, yeah, I made it home safe and not like going this long. Oh my gosh. And I liked you and I had so much fun, blah, 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 blah. It was our first date. It's normal for her to be like, I'm tired, made it home. Cool. Good night. And go about her day. Like, it doesn't have to be this big display. That is normal. First of all, it's it, I'd be scared if, if it was the first day that somebody was like, I like you so much, and da 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 And now I, I'm like, oh, like, wait, you don't even know me. Mm-mm. And, like, this Mm-mm. is a little bit of a sidebar from that, but, like, because I've had conversations even earlier this week with um, individuals about this of, like, even when you're only against an old person, it's only been, like, a month for a person not to be fully invested in you. That is okay. Sometimes you're right. We do meet those folks. I have had that happen before where I met a person where literally first night that like we went on a date, it was instant sparks. It was instantly we stayed and shut down a restaurant talking and laughing and cutting up. It was instantly after that, like we are now having phone conversations four hours every night, texting throughout the day. And those type of moments are great, but they're actually far and few between. I agree. I that's agree. not what every date is going to be like. That's not, and that doesn't even mean that that's your person. Sometimes those are the persons that like disappoint you the most. And it's that person that you're like, cool. That grows on you. And then you want to okay. be like, oh, wait. 
relationships take time and they are built like don't be like me meet a guy fall in love in a club he your boyfriend the next day don't do that i've done okay. that been there done that great one of the best relationships i've been in crazy work but just don't do that mm -mm. take yeah, me your time relationship stress me so much Yo, yeah, your relationship stressed me so much. And I just be trying my hardest to be a good supportive fan. And you just be talking. I'm like, are, are you happy? And you're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, okay, happy. People think so like I am like heartless because all I listen to is trap music and stuff like that. But I am really like a yeah, hope. If you really know girl. me, I am a lover girl. Like well, I, I may be in the me. trap, but like I really am a lover girl. Like I I yeah, I'll fall for you real quick. Like I'm I'm the girl you meet in the club. Like, are you ready to get married? You want to be together? Like, let's go. Like, I'm I'll be ready to risk it all. I am that you, girl. You know what's crazy about this is like, <laughs> um, so like my astrologer actually swears up and down, like the person that's supposed to be my person because of my Mars placement. She's like, Oh, it's gonna be quick. Y'all gonna know instantly. She was like, and I would not be surprised if you got married super quickly. And I was like, that does not even I change my mind every day about if I even believe marriage. Like, what are you talking about? It always, and it's so funny too, because like last time, like I got a um, astrological reading for the year and I was mm -hmm. talking to them about this and they had brought it up and I was like, none of my good homegirls would even believe that. I was like, I promise you, if all of us came in a room, like who's going to be the one that gets married in three months, I promise I'm going to be the last person named. She was like, no, no, because of your Mars placement and a couple other things. So I try my hardest surprised. not to judge because I'm like, I don't know. There, there's a chance. I might run out here. <laughs> yeah, like, what's his middle name? Girl, girl if you came to me and said, I'm dating somebody and then all of a sudden, let's just say six months later, you're married. I'll be like, oh, you Expected. like him, like him. Look. Yeah, you look. love him. <laughs> That's your boo. <laughs> man, you're right. I'm ready. I'm ready to meet this magical, mystical man. Ooh, it's oh, I just... can't wait. Oh, it's going to be a nice time. Oh, I can't wait. Mm. But all that to say, yeah, I agree with what you originally said. Like, first of all, be a certain Ask the Ask. question. Ask. We're doing a lot for a, like a new date where it really doesn't seem like she did anything wrong. Like, it doesn't seem like she, you, you asked, hey, did you make it home? And she didn't respond. It yeah, wasn't like... People do she might be at home. I know when I be coming home from days, first thing I do is take my bra off and start taking my makeup off. You texting me, asking me how it was, I'm going to be like, cool, because I'm letting this face mask sit for 15 minutes. And That's it's hard. hard. I have my glasses off. I can't see. We can talk you tomorrow. Lashes. The lashes is... That's first yeah. I take off my lashes first and I put the throat up. Like, baby, I'm, I'm chilling. So give, give me time. a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I got the next one. All right, this one is uh more of a lighthearted one. It's very quick. All right, it says, no siblings this time, sadly, on a kid's party invite. Is that ever okay? Is it ever okay not to invite siblings to a kid's party? I think not. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, I don't actually pick this question, even though it's like very short, because as a mother who is trying to have play dates with other mothers, like y'all do too much. Y'all really be out here doing too much. Yes, I think it's perfectly okay. If my second grader is in friends with your second grader, then only your second grader should be showing up to the party. I don't know why I have to feed all five of the rest of your kids. That is not what I signed up for. And I have been on play dates and I have been to birthday parties and I have been to just different events that are sponsored around kids. And you would be surprised how bold and just inconsiderate some of these other parents are. It's expensive to throw birthday parties. And especially nowadays, people be throwing birthday parties where they give individual gift bags with specialized things like the kids' names, bracelets, little things like that. They do birthday parties at like the little bouncy house places where you have to pay per head or you have like, I paid for 10 kids and then y'all come in with y'all extra five and then want us to have to pay the cost. Or even like planning out food and stuff. I invited... 10 people on this list why is there 13 people here why is there 15 yeah. people here i think yes that's not only more than okay i feel like that should be the standard if you have additional children that you are like well i don't want their siblings to feel left out then don't bring your child it's fine let all y'all be left out go <laughs> and i feel like mean kind of say this but like it is not my job to like teach your children for the first time that not everything's about them but if I have to, like, don't, if you make me, if you put me in that position, I guess. Um, 
So yes, I think this is not only more than okay. I personally believe like this should be the standard. If I'm again inviting Miss Miss Frizzle's second grade class, that only the kids in Miss Frizzle's second mm-hmm. grade class should come. I don't want Jebediah and, and, and Michaela coming just because they are also your children and I didn't know nothing yes. about them. And now they're wondering why that why don't I have a gift bag? Aw. I, you hmm. know, and also sometimes it's about ages too. Sometimes it is I'm doing things that are age appropriate for a second grader, but you done brought this toddler and they're running around and your toddler's getting knocked down. Mm-hmm. Now this is a liability for me. I'm big on it. I think not. Oh, yeah, it's okay. It actually, again, I think it should be standard. That's where I fall up on this. So coming from a household where it's just me, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't really quite give a damn if nobody comes to any of my kids' birthday parties. It will just be me and my mother and the dog if it has to be in my husband i don't care about siblings i don't care about none of that yeah that <laughs> is wild because you know i've had play dates too where i'm thinking only one child is coming and you bring the whole crew which fine it's just a play date whatever but like i'm not expecting it and it has ruined the play date let me say this kids know who they want to invite now if they want through i give one through seven one through six Throw a birthday party at home with your parents to go on. You don't need nothing extravagant. They ain't gonna remember no way. But that seven to own up, they know who they want to invite. And, and I was blessed. My mom literally would ask me, who do you want to invite to your birthday party? Or you have this many invitations, hand them out wisely. I got to make that choice. Just like adults, if I'm having a birthday party, don't bring your homegirl who I've never met to my birthday dinner. That part, just how you want a peace of mind at your birthday. Why can't your child have a damn peace of mind at their own birthday? Like, point blank, period. They want a peace of mind too. Like, mm mm. But it mm-hmm. also, again, you don't know the type of expenses you are putting on that other parent. That part. Anyways, you have the next one? Yep. This is an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, without explanation, I got a call telling me not to come into work tomorrow and I was being let go. No idea what I could have done wrong. I finally found a place where I loved that I did, loved what I did and who I worked with. I had no idea this was coming. So tonight I'm feeling all these emotions like rejection and embarrassment. I can't sleep. Life sucks sometimes. First of all, I'm sending positive vibes your way because that definitely does suck. Um, I can relate because I definitely had a job that I absolutely loved and adored and they played in my face and fired me and it, it, it really, really sucked because it sent me in a whirlwind that I never thought that I would be in. But I'm glad I went through it because it made me who I am today and make way more confident in my own abilities as a person. Yeah. So with that being said, you really don't know what the world is going to bring you or what other opportunity may fall into your lap. So you have to be open to all things. It may seem like it's rejection right now. It may seem like it's a, it's a, I want to say fucking failure, but it may seem like it's a failure right now. You're going to feel rejected. You're going to feel hurt. You're going to be emotional. You might even be a little depressed. Not even want to get out of bed, but keep fighting to see another day, basically. Like, take care of yourself. Because mm-hmm. when you when you do lose a job, that's the loss of something. That hurts. Mm-hmm. Because then it comes with all the other worries of how am I going to make this? How am I going to be able to do this? Unless you got an amazing savings account when you can take some time to yourself. For me, I didn't have a savings account. So I had to get out here and work all these other jobs that I really just didn't like, I did what I had to do to make sure my stuff was going, I was going to eat. So with that being said, just take care of yourself the best way that you know how, because at this, at in a moment like that, you really got to love, love on yourself. So you really don't fall into depression because stuff can get a little, a little real. If you need to see a therapist about it, see a therapist because they kind of help you work out those emotions and they work out. Is it the five, five stages of grief? Cause it is, it is, and you yep. do go through yep. grief. It's, 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 I never realized it, but losing a job is, it's not similar to losing a family member, but it is the loss and you do go through it. Like you, you go through all five stages and you sometimes go back to about that first one still mad. Like you, so just take care of yourself. <laughs> you covered that perfectly. Like, I don't really have much to add to that. Cause I agree. Um, especially on that five stages of grief point. A lot of times we do not recognize things as grief and we just like, oh, I'm just angry. I'm just angry. And it's like, no, you are going through grief. 
You mm-hmm. found a place that you love. You had plans for this place. You thought like, oh, finally, I got a place there. I, I like waking up and going to this place. I like my working, but I like my coworkers. And that was just taken from you. And like Gabby says, like sometimes you got to process that. Sometimes it is anger. Sometimes you jump to bargaining and you think you had acceptance and then you go back into like, well, maybe I should email Sarah and ask her, you know, was, was this was this about me? Keep stealing pins from the front desk. I can give them back the pins. Like you go through those stages mm-hmm. and it's important to let yourself recognize it. This is one of those questions or statements I think is hard because there is no answer that I think makes you feel better. It's one of those things that just sucks. It happens. It hurts. And I think Gabby covered it perfectly. I think they cover it. We're just saying like, I feel rejected. I feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And especially again, when you don't see it coming, it's one thing when you know you on your second strike (laughs) and you woke up 30 (laughs) minutes past when you were supposed to be there. You're like, "Ah, yeah, they, damn, I got a meeting. I was not expecting this on my calendar for Friday. Yeah, they about to let me go. They better let me go. That's one thing. But it's another thing where you are like just happy and then it comes out of nowhere. It's a blow. Sit there. Let yourself process those feelings. It's okay to feel those things. It's okay to feel rejected after that. It's okay to feel a little embarrassed after that. But Mm -hmm. don't let it. Do not think these jobs are who you are. That part. That part. At the end of it reflect on your feelings process but remember that you are so much more than this job so losing this sense of job is not losing yourself because you are more than that job and even when you have these jobs that you love and you feel like is your calling you are more than that you are so much more than being a therapist you're so much more than being a flight attendant you're so much more than being a teacher you're so much more than being a principal you're so much more than all these things that might be a big part of your day-to-day now But make sure that you understand, like, this is not all of who I am. So if that thing is ever taken from you, it's okay. You might fall, but you can be resilient and bounce back because there's so much more to me than that. Very true. Very, very, very true. These jobs do not define you. And at the end of the day, I definitely empathize with you on that because I I didn't see myself being fired. I've always quit on my own terms and I've always had a backup plan. Um, this is probably the first time in my life I did not have a backup plan. And what made it so messed up is they actually offered me another job, signed for the other job, did the other job for one day, and they fired me the next day. Yeah. Crazy work. Like that, that really did it. And I've never been, and this is a time when we're right coming right out of COVID. Mm-hmm. Like jobs are not easy to come by. Like they're very hard to find in this few in between. And I have skills. I got two degrees. And I still couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. So don't be afraid to assert yourself and look into other ways of making money. Um, That made me start a business and I'm blessed for my business. I'm a flight attendant and I never, I don't think I ever would have been a flight attendant if it wasn't for me branching out and looking at other opportunities. And it's crazy when you branch out and look for other opportunities, guess what? All the opportunities that you actually do have a degree in come back. Like I've been offered two government jobs turned them down because I actually found something I enjoy. So you can always double back to what you were doing, but always exert yourself and extend yourself beyond what you think you should be doing because you never know. You never know. And this is making me think back to that time period when you were going through that. I remember me and you be on the phone and talking about it because it did like broke your heart. You was really kind of like, I was putting faith in you guys because I could have been out here looking for other jobs because that was a position where and you let me know if there's any part you want me to cut out but that was a position where you for a while was like "Mm, some things look iffy with with y'all money with some stuff do I need to look for another job and they kept telling you no and they kept being like I I turned down a government job for them oh I learned real quick yeah I remember like you had peep game about some of the things and then they and they were like no stay with us we got sure you did. we got you sure covered. and they told me and i'm not like going no said, and everything they said that you will be good and everything and i bring that up to say though like I, i'll say it two ways one if you know you you're a good worker and you've done what you were supposed to do do not take it personal Don't take it personal. Don't believe this. We are a family bullshit. You're not a family. Unfortunately, we live in a capitalist society. And I do want to throw in there, don't fall for the the switch. Like I too. I can tell y'all some stories. We're not going to get into it. But for you, I say just take care of yourself. That's the best thing you can do. Go go through your emotions because that's what you're going to go through. Go through your emotions. Feel what you feel because you have a right to feel that way. 
but work through it do the work to work through it you know and the only thing I was going to say was again on two sides is if you know you was a good worker and you know you were doing good and you still got fired and it came unexpectedly again don't take it personal understand Mm -hmm. at the end of the day we live in a capitalistic society that they are going to do what they need to do for their bottom dollar it's not something that you should be embarrassed about or even necessarily feel like you're not enough or you did something wrong it is them and that's how the capitalistic system works that's how corporations work on the other hand if you are one of those people who are just not a good worker and it happened take this as an opportunity to approve upon yourself because here's the thing sometimes it is us Sometimes the truth of the matter is sometimes it it, is sometimes we do not do good work. (laughs) Sometimes we show up late because we like, I mean, who got fired me? I'm the one that trained everybody. And sometimes you are a good worker, but you aren't professional. And sometimes people just get tired of that. So if it was, if you got fired and they did give you some remarks, look at the remarks. Are some of them valid? And if they are, work on it. Yep. Well spoken. All right. So I got the next one. Which mm-hmm. is, I don't know, just don't know what more to do, but how do I manage a partner who's defensive, always thinks I'm getting at him when I say something. It can be anything for me asking if he could pick up his pants from the floor for the future. I get a defensive, I don't normally do it. To me asking what time dinner may be, he assumes I'm questioning him on why it's late, for example. It's exhausting. I mean, my suggestions break up well, but I feel like you want more than that. Um, I feel like you have three options. One option is talk to him about his reaction and see if he's willing to work on it. Give him examples. Do it in a loving way, however. There is something that we I utilize. It's called conflict types when I'm working with folks. And there's like four major conflict types, right? There is the fight mode people. My fight mode people are people who, the minute they feel something, they gonna sell it. The minute they have a feeling, they're going to tell it. They always want to talk. It it feels like they're always engaging in conflict with you, right? To them, it's just, no, I want to express myself. I want to make sure you understand where I'm coming from. But it could come off to the people that have to deal with them as they are criticizing them, as if they are demanding perfection out of them, as if they are being a bully. We also got my flea folks, my fee folks. (laughs) is me i'm working on it but my philly folks are the people the minute that there is conflict they get up and leave the room these are the people the minute you come in here they're like here you go that bullshit i'm gonna be at my house i'm call me when you ready call me about this when you ready to talk about it like mature adults but these are the people that like to like get up and physically leave they can be a little bit passive aggressive when they are doing it and it comes off as if Like you don't take my feelings serious to their partners. And a lot of times they're not trying to not take my my feelings serious, but a lot of times you catch them off guard and they feel overwhelmed. And so they leave the situation. So that feeling of overwhelmness feels lifted when they don't have to physically sit there because you just, you surprise them. Next, we have my freeze folks. My freeze folks are the people who they have what I call like a low emotional ceiling. Whereas some of us, we can tolerate so much before we hit the roof, right? We can do a couple back and forth. We can do a couple arguments. We can do a couple, a little bit of cussing before we hit our ceiling. But with my freeze folks, they have a very low one, which means you got a very short amount of time before they just disassociate. Because when they hit their roof, they don't yell. They just detach. They just dissociate. Their body is physically there. Their mind is singing Gucci Man. I think I love them. And on beat, try not to do the Harlem Shake as you're talking. Those are my freeze folks. And then what happens a lot of times with my freeze folks is, again, they get very overwhelmed. And when they get overwhelmed, their body just kind of shuts down. They like collapse within themselves. And so it comes off to the people that they don't care. But for them, it is just, I am feeling emotionally overwhelmed. And so I shut down to keep my system safe. That's how I feel safe. And this comes off as them being like, "Uh uh-huh, okay, whatever. Saying very short words. And again, it's because they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So they can't even process what's going on fully. And so they're just giving you as little, they don't have so much energy to work with. So you you only get in the two words. You only get three words. And my last conflict type is my fixed folks. And my fixed folks, these are the folks who are, I am so avoidant of conflict. Even if you're the one that hurts me, I will apologize and say, okay, let's just drop it so we can stop fighting. These are the people is, I just, I just don't want to fight. I don't care. Do I got to give in? Do you got to give in? Whoever needs to get in, let's make it stop. Whatever I got to do to make the argument stop. We ain't got to resolve nothing. Please just don't make me feel uncomfortable. Those are my fixed folks. 
And I bring this up to say that when you are in a relationship with somebody and you recognize me, you have two different conflict types. It's important to recognize what that person's conflict type is like because it can help you figure out how to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. On my freeze and my fixed type, they're what we call shame-based conflict types, which means when we get into conflict, I am thinking that the issue is me. When we're talking shame, there's a difference between guilt and feeling shameful. When we're talking about guilt, guilt is I agree that there is something I shouldn't do and I did it anyways. And now I feel bad for doing it because there's this agree upon rule that I also agree is bad and I did it anyways, that's guilt. But shame is I am the thing that is bad. Shame is when things happen, I feel bad because I think I'm corrupt. Not the thing that I did, it's me that's the problem. And my freeze and my um, fixed folks, they tend to be very shame-based. And so when you're arguing with people who are on the shame-based sides of conflict, you first have to address their shame by letting them know this is not about you. This is not me correcting you. I still love you. I know that you're trying, but this is what the problem is. And I can't deal with this. Address that shame feeling first, and then you go into the conflict. Your person who's defensive sounds like he's on the pride base. That's my fight. And flee folks. They are very pride-based conflict people. And when you're arguing with somebody that's very pride-based, again, think about it. We're talking about pride. These are folks that like, when we get in conflict, they immediately feel like I have to defend myself because you are challenging me. And now I got to prove a point to you. And when you are in conflict with these type of people, you first have to address your, their pride and let them know, I, I am not trying to get your guard up. But what I am trying to do is make sure we work on this. So that is one possibility. Figuring out what his conflict style is, addressing it, giving him the chance to work on his um, defensiveness. But also another option is you can leave. There are some people that we are simply just not compatible with. And we stress ourselves out, turn gray early, raise our blood pressure, trying to make things work with people who have decided that they're not changing. And we know this is something that hurts us. We know this is something that makes it hard to work with. And we spend two, three, four years of our life trying to convince ourselves that we can be okay with this when the truth of the matter is y'all simply are just not compatible. So another right. option is you can also just leave. You literally don't have to deal with this. And I know it seems like I'm always advocating to leave, but like... It's very, as someone who has dated someone who's very defensive, let me just say, it is very hard to be with someone who you feel like you are always on eggshells with when it comes to communication. I personally don't feel like it's worth it. You might feel like it is. So this is a very interesting question to me because I've dated men, you know where I'm going with this, mm -hmm. that were very defensive. And um, one it was just no winning, which caused me to flee and actually caused my body to shut down. I realized I was very symptomatic. I realized I can't be with anybody who is defensive like that because it causes me to shut down and I don't like it. Um, I 110% agree with everything Chris said. I think you need to leave. <laughs> I don't think being with anybody defensive, it only leads to problems more problems especially when you find yourself trying to stand up for yourself that's when it leads to a lot more conflict um that's just my opinion that comes from my own personal experience me I'm at this big age I'm bouncing I'm not staying trying to fix anything because at this point you're the problem not me it's hard it is hard I, I, yeah, I that was I really a very tough wanted... question for me no, I look same because I, I try to give the alternative, which is okay, work through it. And this is how this is right. one way you can work mm -hmm. through, blah, blah, blah. But like I said, personally to me, this is a deal breaker. It's one thing if it's every now and then. It's one thing if you touch on a personal subject that's kind of triggering them. But it's another thing with no, they're defensive about everything. I don't it's, it's, it, you can't even ask you I can't even ask you pick up a sock without you being mad like what like oh no you got one two times with me but with being defensive like that mm -hmm. and it's just it's just I'm I'm just I'm I'm a, it's not gonna work because I, I refuse to be with somebody who I mean me. I had a situation with somebody it was different than yours but it just felt like learned incompetence because while they did not get aggressive 
it always turned into an hour long lecture about why they couldn't do this because their great grandma traumatized them. And that's why they now can't pick up socks. Like it always turned into this long ass excuse. And I got tired of like, because it was like, okay, so you, you can't do nothing. You can't wash the chicken apparently because one time it's up got in your mouth and you spit up. And now it's been 20 years and you still think about that. And so now you can't do that. And how dare I ask you to wash the chicken? I know how much that traumatized you when you were six. Like it just turned into that. And it felt like I don't know what to communicate with you. Now I'm just running around doing stuff because I don't want to have a conversation with you about it. Mm -hmm. And then I, that leads to resentment. And that resentment leads to me being me. <laughs> that might be a like, personal issue. <laughs> I dated a defensive man and it led to other things mm -hmm. and um I could never understand why he was the way he was because this is somebody who came from a two-parent household this is somebody who came from a religious household this is somebody who was a big-time basketball star did everything he was supposed to do and somehow some way just ended up being like not such a good person in life like, and I really mean that, like, genuinely just not a good person. When I met him, he was decent. But as you get to know people, things just switched and clicked. And he just turned out to be somebody who I probably should have not encountered ever in my life. Um, there were moments he would be sweet to me. And then there were moments he would be very, very, very disrespectful and rude. And um, I could never understand it. And as I look back, because... 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 2, 3, 4. It's been about seven years, seven, eight years since this situation has happened. I realized the problem wasn't me. I wasn't ever going to be able to fix the situation. Um, the problem really was him. And if he's making you feel like that and you are already, in my opinion, trying to figure out a way to fix it, the best and smart thing you could do for yourself and for your own confidence and for your own just self in general is just leave yeah leave yeah and I just want to throw a quick big in there um and this was not the main topic but y'all don't because we see it on a lot of these broke podcasts right you know yeah get you a woman from a two-parent home you know raised right I'm like went to church or so forth and then sometimes we hear things like that and we think that that means this is going to be a good person and it means nothing it means nothing it means nothing I've dated many men from two parent homes and it it did not mean a single thing. Um, it did not mean a single thing at all. Me and Ashley have talked about this on episodes because Ashley grew up in a single mother home with her mom was a teen mom. And she's talked about that here on the show. And I grew up in a parent household, like even my parents divorced, my mom remarried. And then I had my stepdad who fully played the role of my dad. And me and her both talk about like, still struggling with the same issues when it came to fathers mm -hmm. we both still got father issue both of them negroes been in my life this whole time <laughs> still still got still still struggle with daddy issues you know and and the same thing with sometimes we see men in two-parent household and like oh and he's gonna value marriage he's gonna know how to treat women mm, no that's not to you, you know very you surprised. Know daddy was treating the mama you'd be very 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 surprised i grew up in a single parent household with one parent who I think is awesome because you know my mom she's awesome she and she had me young and she didn't have no parents so there was no guidance on this book that y'all want to say how to parent kids it's mm -hmm. not one there's no book on how to parent kids every child's different you love them you have to look at how a person was raised but don't that whole one household two household thing it's not a thing I'm it's still an awesome person and I have one awesome parent. And I will say that to the day that I die, I have one awesome parent who's who stuck it through. That Look, my my favorite ex grew up in a household with two highly educated parents who were married, who had great wealth and so forth. And their marriage did nothing but cause him all types of issues around love, which is why we we went together so well. I, I matched with those issues. We both had two parent, highly educated household. <laughs> we both came together. It, it, it traumatized each other and it's okay both of our therapists are well paid because of our problem and i'll say this and sometimes when you grow up in two parent households and i had to learn this it's almost like it was better for me to grow up in one household because sometimes when you grow up in two parent households 
some parents do believe in staying in the same household just for the children and they'd be sleeping in separate bedrooms. They'd be doing some shady stuff and kids do pick up on stuff. Kids do pick up on energy and kids do see that. And I do think sometimes that messes up kids' perception on love and yeah. kids' perception on how things should be. I've never had to deal with that. I was blessed with just one parent. So I never really had to deal with that. But I know like some of my friends like from Catholic school, like that was... um a thing like, oh, the parents are kind of just together for the kids and they stay together to raise kids, which I think that's a beautiful thing. If you can really just stay together and raise your kids, that's perfect. If it works for you, it works for you. But it does somehow affect your children and how they their views on love. It mm-hmm. it 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 affects it affects them in a in a different way. I mean, I'm always been a big believer. It is more important for a child to grow up in a happy household than it is for them to grow up in a two parent household. In one parent household, yes, you can have all types of dysfunction, but you can also have in two parent household and a household with highly educated, well off financially parents. You can still have a lot of dysfunction. You can still have mm-hmm. kids that pick up on a lot of things. Um, it's the happy household, I think, that makes the long the biggest impact. Yes, I do think it's important for um I think a lot of times when I work with people that have different attachment issues, one of the questions I do ask is like depending on, you know, if they only grow up with their mother, I ask, have you ever seen your mother be loved properly? Because that does impact you. It does impact it does. you and the person who you have the closest bond with, you know, in your formative years and you've never seen them be loved or you never seen them be loved in a healthy way. That does something to how you learn to form attachment with others. That is important. But also, okay, now y'all, maybe your mom and dad are together and they've been in high school sweethearts, but that man been cheating on her since day one. Yeah, we see your mama cry multiple times. That's a normal part of love and life for her. That also makes an impact on you as well. I know we're a little off topic, but I thought that was a good point to bring up because I do know I I hear it world podcast all the time i'd also hear people talking that rhetoric in life like well you know it's really i have a home girl like that's a big thing for her like she's like really big on that and me and her have had discussions about that but you know her thing is i want a man that grew up in a two-parent household and those men have been causing her pain and issues just like the men who didn't so don't be fooled by that ladies don't be even with oh he went to a great school he has a great job he has a great career based on that man's actions what what he out here doing Art. All right. So Gab, you got the last one. This is the last. I do. One, or the next one. Oh, this have? is interesting. I actually found this one very interesting, but um, I'll just read it. So I matched with this girl about 10 days ago and everything was okay. She's slightly thicker than what I normally like, but still good. She seems normal, intelligent, and conservative, except in the bed. The first time I took my pants down, she got this huge smile on her face and screamed, at me to shove it in deep and then a few days later told me she wants me to put it in no lube not even a courtesy spit (laughs) it's just immature and she talks like a porn star but otherwise comes off completely normal and respectable i honestly don't know what to make of it all it would be almost funny if it wasn't just out of this world level weirdness i don't know if i should say anything I don't want to spoil our sex life as I do enjoy having sex with her. You know, I'm going to say this. I've always wanted to know a man's opinion about certain things that come out of... Let me, go ahead. Go go out. Because what I'm about to say is a little more explicit. Let me shut the door. So I've always wanted to know a man's feelings Did you feelings tell your about, dog to leave the room so you can have this conversation? I did. That's my child. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I did. Okay. Go ahead. (laughs) I've always wanted to know like a man's opinion on like certain things when it comes to like women being freaky in the bedroom. And I say that as somebody who is a talker, like I, if I am comfortable, I will tell you some nasty things to do to me. And I'm always curious to know how you feel about that. Um, not going to, you know, say these things on here, but I'm just saying like, I can be very freaky. And so this was interesting that I read your opinion on this and you found it to be offensive. He was like, no. How is it offensive? (laughs) Because you like it. Like you enjoy it. So I'm very interested. Like it, it kind of caught me off guard. Like and it made me wonder, I want to ask you a question. Like, you don't say any things back? Like, you don't be are you getting into it too? Like, are you getting quietly? And not to be explicit, but 
clearly you're enjoying this so what's the problem you're so funny look i i this is not the right topic for me either my homeboy um sent me the clip of shannon sharp this week of him and and my response was i mean i like a nigga to talk you through it so like (laughs) i watched it i i did watch it i watched it i was like look well but this is interesting i was i did not see the problem i was just like yeah yeah that's that's exactly the conversation oh, he should be having. I don't. What? What? Why are, why are we mad? Oh, because it got leaked. And he was like, "No, no." First of all, first of all, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, this one was interesting. We should not have said this for last. This one was interesting though, because, like you said, like it seems. I mean, you're saying. I, I'm wondering if you're just caught off guard, and you are like, "How am I supposed to? How am I supposed to to handle this?" Because you ended it with is. I actually really enjoy completing this act with her. So mm-hmm. I mean, if it is bothersome, bring it up. I guess. I mean, yes. Is it a thing that might spoil the mood? Yep. That might be a part of like what she needs. She might be exactly, a talker, and that just might be the thing that gets off for some people. Talking is a big part of the whole thing, and especially for women, a lot of times we need the foreplay. Like just the actual act is not enough. Add the foreplay. Add the sparkle I mean, glitter. I'm one of those people, if I can't come to the bedroom and be my natural self, then baby, I might not want it because I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. I'm I'm just going to be one of them talking about spit in my motherfucking mouth and do what you need to do. Get like, it, I'm it, like that. It, so it. I'm, I'm cut, sorry. I'm, I, I have to cut it. this out. We have, I have to cut it out. What about the children, Gabby? What about the baby? Oh. Do they watch on this? I'm sorry. I thought this was Most of our demographic actually is like 30 to 45 that is most oh, of our demographic God. but we do cut have a 10 percent. even though i put like okay, just saying, this question morning. just it warranted it i could not say what i need to say without i'm saying cutting it. out what y'all i'm cutting out what she said so if y'all like what what did i miss y- 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 y'all miss my blood pressure rising because i didn't even know that about my friend i didn't even know that information about my friend. chris knows a lot about me <laughs> a lot yeah. too much me and you are probably the most like every now and then i'll see memes where they're like are y'all really friends if your friend has never seen you naked and i have certain friends of mine that will send it to me like what they be doing like i ain't never had no friendship like this and i'm like me and gabby during the pandemic have both sat on the toilet naked facetiming each other like we <laughs> first of all i FaceTime my friendship in, in, in the shower like they know i have no boundaries when it comes to me like i just i'm like that like I'm, I'm like that but what I, what i was gonna say is with with this with this post with this guy is um if she stopped being this way would you still like her more would you like her less or would you be like would you still want her to still do this? Yeah. So, so in some way, I would literally say, um, you're nasty and you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you think he he's just ashamed that he likes it? He's doing a check-in like, anybody else? Weird about this? I swear, I think that's what it is. I think you're like doing like a check-in like, does anybody else subscribe? Let me tell you something. There is no boundaries on what goes on in the bedroom. Well, I have some boundaries. I'll say that for myself. I definitely have some boundaries when it comes to certain things. But there should be boundaries. When, okay. But there is like, when it comes and you're with that your significant other and, you know, they are freaky, just know that she could possibly only be being this way with you. I don't know if you're in a relationship. I don't know if y'all together. I don't know if this he is- He says this. it's been 10 days, Gab. Oh, did I miss the part? Hold on. Wait, hold on. Let me First go back. sentence. He did say 10 days. Yeah. About 10 days ago. Hmm. Well, clearly she's comfortable with you. <laughs> Let's sum it up. Clearly she's comfortable with you and um, she liked what she saw. <laughs> Here's my thing. If it's just a hookup, because sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes it's not, I'm trying to be with this person and everybody is aware what the situation is. Don't fool people into thinking otherwise. But if it's a situation where it's casual and everybody's clear on what it is, if it's not harming you and you feel like saying something might make her not want to do Seymour, it might make her uncomfortable that you think it's weird or whatever, and it's not harming you, it's not killing the mood for you, then I don't see the harm in just letting it be a thing. I don't see the harm. There are sometimes things people are into that you're like, what? And then later you like, okay, 
okay yeah yeah okay i get it i i, I get it now next thing you know that that is your kink that's the thing mm-hmm. that you're now requiring in relationships so if it's casual and it's not harming you it's not killing the mood and you are concerned like ah, i do think if i bring it up it's gonna make it weird and it's a casual thing i don't see i don't even think i know ne- you necessarily have to bring it up but if you think I like, agree. oh, I want this to be something more serious and I don't want to deal with this long term, then you got to use your communication skills. And it might just be for her. That's a deal breaker. She's like, nah, this is what I need to make this thing work for me. So I, I guess we can't do it. And that's OK. If y'all incompatible, y'all incompatible. But I, agree. Like, I agree. It sounds like she's very enthusiastic. So good job to you. And it sounds like you like it. <laughs> it sounds like she like it. It sounds like she very much likes what you are bringing to the table and she wants to be vocal about it. And I I think she deserves rewards for that. Sometimes people are not very vocal about things you should definitely get praise for. I think praise is a great thing in that area. No more notes. That's all I got. Have nothing else. <laughs> have nothing else. So that's all the questions that we have for today, guys. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure yes. to like, comment, review. Wherever you are listening, share the podcast if you want. We, y'all, we, I promise you, we are trying on the TikTok. <laughs> there are videos on there. So you can go on the TikTok. You can follow She Wolf Alchemy Podcast or follow us on Instagram at She Wolf Alchemy. We'll have a new episode for you guys next week or in two weeks. And bye. Peace.